across Texas. The issue is... I'm Rudy Kosky in Austin. I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. Greg Grugan has the night off. Texas, the issue is chaplains in schools. A coalition of civil rights advocates recently sent a letter to local school leaders across Texas about that idea, which was authorized by the passage of SB 763 during the regular session of the Texas legislature. Now, the letter from the ACLU and Americans United for Separation of Church and State warned school districts not to adopt a policy allowing chaplains as student counselors, claiming the new state law is unconstitutional. I spoke to Robert Boston with Americans United about the letter and their objections. You know, the purpose of a chaplain is to provide spiritual solace, comfort, religious counseling, that sort of thing. And there are contexts where that's appropriate, such as the military or hospitals and other applications. But in a public school, that's really a problem because public schools serve children from lots of different religious backgrounds and those of no faith. And the idea of spiritual counseling and spiritual advice, that really belongs at, at the, the home and the church, not in the public school. The legislature has done things by putting the Ten Commandments in, uh, prayer or at least time for um, silence. Why still object to having chaplains at least come in and provide some comfort or advice? The public school system in the United States has been secularized, I think rightly, since the early 1960s when the Supreme Court handed down the school prayer rulings. Now, the Supreme Court didn't say kids can't pray in school. They said that public schools can't compel or coerce young people to pray in schools. And I think that's the principle we really need to keep in mind here, is that young people should have the right to engage in religious activity if they choose to. When you bring chaplains in, or when public schools sponsor religious activity in other ways, I think that creates an element of coercion, an element of control, an element of, of even force that uh, isn't really appropriate in public education. In some of the debate discussion that I heard on this legislation, there, there was talk about putting up some guardrails that, that would prevent the chaplains from pushing a religious belief one side or the other, and that this was more of an opportunity to have an adult to try to help a kid in a stressful situation for school districts that, that don't have the resources to bring in time, extra counselors. Why is that wrong? As long as you have some guardrails up. No, I'm surprised that anybody would say that they could put guardrails up, and one of them would be that a chaplain who is a religious counselor, would not talk about religion. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. I understand that there are challenges in some school districts in Texas with providing school counselors. Well, the answer to that is for the legislature to allocate money so that those districts that are struggling will have the resources to provide those counselors. Instead, the legislature seems to think they can just push this job onto chaplains, and uh, that's just problematic on many levels. This isn't a morality attack, is it? Well, we all know that there are problems that young people experience in all facets of their lives, and we want there to be support for them. And that's why I think it, it really would have been a much better avenue for Texas lawmakers to go down to provide secular counselors for those districts that can't afford them. There are other ways to do this that would, that would help and that would respect everybody's rights. There are ways that would give young people the support they need, but not raise these church-state violations. What we're saying basically here is that we're gonna be keeping an eye on what's going on in Texas. And if we get evidence of something happening that we believe is clearly a violation of separation of church and state or a public school uh, advocating for religion in an inappropriate way, that we would want to come in and address that. Now, our hope would be that we don't have to sue over this or we don't have to go to court. We would rather engage in a dialogue. That dialogue may eventually become litigation, which is why that's my word for the interview. Stephen, what's your word? Unnecessary. Mark Jones from Rice University is sitting in for Greg Grugan. Mark, what is your word? It'd be SCOTUS, and that's short for Supreme Court of the United States. 
<laughs> Man, that's multiple hyphens there, Mark. All right. Well, those are some pretty good words, but they're not final words. There's still a lot to discuss, and we will do just that right after this.